Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride and welcome back to another video. Today I'm setting up my bullet journal for August 2020 with a Leo theme, which I'm super excited about. This video is also sponsored by Skillshare. I'll talk about them at the end of the video, but for now let's get right into the setup because there is a lot of painting in this one and it took me quite a while. So the primary colors for this theme are a nice, rich, deep navy blue and gold. So for the navy blue, I mixed together two of my watercolor paints from Winsor & Newton's Cotman watercolor line. So I have Lamp Black and Ultramarine Blue, and I mixed them together at maybe a ratio of one to six as far as black to blue, significantly more of the ultramarine with just a small portion of black to get that deep blue. I found if I mixed more of an even proportion of the colors, the color turned out basically black. So just keep that in mind if you're also trying to go for this kind of a navy color and mixing it yourself. All the supplies I'm using in this video will be linked down below in the description box, so check that out if you're looking for anything in particular. Before I start painting, I'm adding a single sheet of paper towel behind the pages and clipping them in place using these little wire clips. This helps to keep the page flat and make sure it doesn't move around while I'm painting. I also find it helps a little bit with buckling. It helps to keep the page pulled taut, which seems to help keep it flat. And the paper towel, of course, helps to soak up any of the moisture that might seep through the page. I'm using my Archer and Olive B5 size notebook, and my notebook has 160 GSM uncoated paper. So I find I can use a pretty significant amount of water without issues because this is a thicker page, but because it's uncoated, it will eventually seep through if you continue to add more water on top. So just keep that in mind. And as I always recommend, do a little test in the back of your bullet journal. A pen test is always recommended, but also a paint test if you're planning on using different mediums because there are so many factors to determining how a certain type of paper will react to whatever medium you're using. On the left side, I wanted to make sort of a smoky cloud effect with the outer edges being a little lighter, a little more transparent and gradually coming into the center, which is the darkest area. On the right side, which is the cover page, I wanted to get more of a uniform wash, but still keep some of that texture a little bit more interest with some lighter areas and darker areas. I'm not worrying too much about trying to get this to be 100% uniform because I do like that variety here. I'm using some washi tape to create a border so I can get nice straight lines with my painting for the cover page. On the left side, I'm going to be drawing the Leo constellation. So I'm just writing Leo along the bottom, starting with my gold gel pen. And once this is dry, I'll be going over top with my gold watercolor. Of course, if you like this theme, but you're not a Leo, feel free to make a theme with whatever sign you are. I am, of course, depicting the common imagery for Leos, the Leo constellation, the symbol for Leo, and of course, a lion. But I would love to see your take on this theme if you do it with a different sign. All of the symbols for all of the signs have so much beauty to them, and I'm really curious to see how this would look with all of the different signs. Let me know in the comments down below what your sign is. For the cover page, I am creating a drawing of a lion because Leo, of course. I wanted to create a lion's head in a very geometric way so that it would play into that feel of a constellation connected by straight lines. Once the gel pen is dry on all of those main areas, I'm going back in with my gold watercolor and the finest brush I could find. 
I don't have the steadiest hand in the world, so the longer a straight line gets, the more wobbly it's gonna be, and I've just accepted that. My hands are not incredibly steady. And honestly, I kind of like it because it reminds me of those old astronomical charts that had kind of inconsistent printing due to the printing technology of the day when they were created and they have areas with a little bit of a thicker line, areas of a thinner line, there's a little bit of irregularity there, and I really like that feel. So I didn't worry too much about my lines not being perfectly straight, though I did, of course, try my best. I decided to use my brightest, most yellow gold paint for this theme. I just thought the contrast would be really nice with the super bright yellow gold on the deep, deep blue, and I'm so glad I went with this color. While all of the gold watercolors I have, I think, are beautiful, this shade in particular just felt so perfect for this theme. I'm also adding a bunch of stars to the background on both of these pieces of art in a similar manner to how I added stars back in my April theme this year. So trying to have a variety of sizes, trying to clump them together in more irregular ways so that it looks a little bit more realistic, creating areas that are more concentrated to look almost like a galaxy in the distance, and trying to utilize negative space by leaving certain areas of the blue a little bit more bare. So now that I've finished my first two pages, I'm flipping to my next spread, which is going to be my monthly calendar on the left side, and then the right side is going to be my quote page. For my monthly calendar, I'm using the same washi tape again, because waste not, want not, and I'm using it in the reverse way so that I can create a dark blue border for my monthly calendar. On the right side, I'm creating a vaguely circular blob in the center of the page in a similar way to how I created the blob on the first page with the Leo constellation, though I tried to go for a slightly different shape, and I'm building up in layers, especially on the monthly calendar border, because I wanted it to be quite dark, but I didn't want to risk any bleed through onto my cover page, so I was being very careful about letting layers fully dry before coming in with more paint. There were certain areas where the paint bled through the washi tape, and while I don't really mind that irregularity, I decided it would look nice to create a bit of a gold border on the inside of the blue border. So I started by adding just some gold gel pen in a straight line on all four sides to use as a guide for adding my watercolor, and then I went ahead and created the header for this spread. This font is loosely inspired by my shower curtain, <laughs> of all things, because we have a shower curtain in our house that is based on old tiny astronomical drawings, and this is the sort of font that's all over it, though my version is a little thinner, a little less bold. I'm adding the calendar itself, keeping it nice and simple, and then going in with my gold watercolor to add a thicker border. I'm trying to make it generally straight, but again, I'm not worrying too much about perfect straight lines. I kind of like a little bit of irregularity here, and I'm just going with it. I'm also taking about a million years to add about a million stars. It's also fun sometimes if you're adding a bunch of dots to represent stars in the sky, to add a couple that look like they're shining or glinting, and even to add a couple little shooting stars or comets. My favorite way to create a glinting star or a shining star is to start with a mostly dry brush, create the dot in the center, and then to drag the brush away from the center in the four directions so that the paint works its way off as you come down the line, which makes the lines taper a little bit. And I do a similar thing with a comet or a shooting star. I'll start with a dot, which is going to be the comet itself, and then add loose brush strokes away from that dot in one direction to be the trail of light behind the comet. 
Now I'm moving on to my quote page and I'm starting by creating a large Leo symbol and then I'm adding my quote below it, which is a heart of gold and a stardust soul. This was actually inspired by a number of different quotes that I saw on Pinterest and I kind of took elements I liked out of a couple of them and put them together. So to my knowledge, no one has said this specific thing. This isn't a quote from anything specific. It's just something that I cobbled together and really liked. I feel like it really represents what Leos are all about. They are often talked about as having a heart of gold and being very confident and generous and warm and inviting of burning very hot. They are a fire sign after all, being very passionate and being a star. You know, Leos are really those extravagant out there creative types. And while I'm very introverted, so I've not always associated myself with a lot of the traits of a Leo, I do see a lot of that in myself. I am very much a caring, generous, creative and passionate person. And the older I get, the more I relate to my Leoness. So I wanted to highlight those most positive aspects of being a Leo. I totally forgot to mention that the reason I'm doing this theme for August is because Leos are born in July and August and my birthday is in August. So I feel like maybe that doesn't need to be said, but for anyone who isn't familiar with where the signs fall throughout the year, we are coming up close to Leo season and it's almost my 28th birthday. Now I'm moving on to the first weekly of August. So I'm starting by creating a band of navy along the top of both pages of the spread and a little section of navy in the bottom right hand corner to add a little artsy element down there. Again, I'm starting off with my gold gel pen to add in the lettering in the header and the little drawing in the bottom corner. This weekly is a rolling weekly. If you're not familiar with the rolling weekly layout, I'll leave a link in the card and in the description box down below so you can check out the video where I explain in detail how to set up this kind of weekly, a couple variations, how to use it, why it's the only weekly I ever use. So feel free to check out that video for all of the details. The sun and the moon are very important aspects of astrology, so I wanted to include them on one of the spreads. I'm also, of course, adding a bunch of stars. And that's my weekly done. So before I show you the final flip through of my August setup, I wanna to talk to you about today's video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. For less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, you can get access to thousands of classes to learn new skills and unlock your creativity. Explore classes designed for real life with fun projects to create, and with the support of a community of millions of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes covering a variety of topics such as lettering, visual art, graphic design, photography, and so much more. The class I'm currently taking is Creative Breakthrough, Eight Exercises to Power Your Creativity, Confidence, and Career by Danielle Krissa. I am no stranger to self-doubt in my creative career, and as soon as I read about this class, I knew I had to take it. The exercises are quick and easy to do, but they have given me a sense of confidence and peace. I feel inspired to keep creating and really appreciated learning from someone who has experienced doubt and struggled with their creative expression. And a big bonus is Danielle's openness, vulnerability, honesty, and sense of humor. The aha moments really resonated with me, and I highly recommend this class. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. 
And now it's time for my final flip through. Here are all of the spreads of my August setup. I am so, so happy with this theme, especially this color combo, the navy blue and the bright yellow gold. I don't use blue in my bullet journal that often, but I really love how this looks and I think I'm gonna have to use some more dark, dramatic jewel tones more frequently. I wanna take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. I appreciate it so, so much. My patrons get printables from my monthly themes each and every month. So if you're interested in joining, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. We would love to have you. And that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Give it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. We would love to have you as part of the family here. And I will see you very soon in my next one. Bye, friends. If you're looking for something else to watch, I recommend you check out this video or this video.